Well, you know, selling is as old as, uh, you know, trading camels at the pyramids. And one of the things I find is that uh, consumers are more sophisticated and informed than ever. And a lot of the things that we learned about sales over the last 50 years, they're not as effective because people are just, they're just so informed. And some of that's misinformation on the internet for sure, but people think they know every damn thing. One of the things I learned when I started selling, I was in a bookstore, this was about 15 years ago. I was fresh out of prison. Uh, I think I was still living in the shelter or maybe just out of the shelter. And uh, I was in a bookstore looking for books on selling and I saw a copy of American Scientific Mind. And there was an article in there by a guy named Robert Cialdini. Cialdini, Cialdini. It's a sure, Cialdini. Know, Cialdini. And it was- Power of persuasion. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know who he was at the time though, but he just wrote this article. And in this article, he talked about a study where there was this group in Arizona that their job was to raise money for childhood disabilities research. And they would send in canvassers to knock on doors in the neighborhood and ask people for money. Mm -hmm. They found out over time about 18% of people would actually give some money, right? Make a contribution. 18%? 18%. But they wanted to increase that. So what they did is they developed this process whereby they would have telemarketers call in those same neighborhoods the week before. Now, the telemarketers would not ask for any money. They would just take a quote-unquote survey. But one of the survey questions was, do you think it's important to fund childhood disabilities research? And, of course, people say, of course it is, right? Yeah, sure. Then they let them go. They don't ask for any money. A week later, they sent in canvassers to knock on those same doors, and they found that the neighborhoods they called into, twice as many people, 36%, made a contribution to childhood disabilities research. Cialdini said, public declarations dictate future actions. The things that we tell people that we're going to do, we typically do. Check this one out. A restaurant in Chicago. One of the biggest challenges restaurants have is people make reservations, and then they don't show up, but they don't call and cancel. Right. So the restaurant's holding the table. They can't put somebody else there because a reservation, then the reservation doesn't show up. It kills capacity and cash flow for a restaurant. So in the course of their reservation process, they would remind people, please call if you can't make your reservation. Please call if you can't make your reservation but they still had a horrible problem. They added two words to their reservation process. The reservation process changed to, will you please call if you can't make your reservation? Then they were trained to pause and allow the customer to say, yes, I will call you. Their no-call, no no-call, no-show rate went down by 65%, simply because they got people to make the public declaration that they would call if they couldn't make their reservations. So people are very, very prone to take actions consistent with their words. So 15 years ago, I had my first sales job sitting in right out of the penitentiary selling air conditioners. And it occurred to me that the biggest challenges I faced were homeowners who wanted three bids, they wanted the cheaper price, they wanted to think about it. And so I got to thinking, what if I could get people to make a public declaration that they don't need the cheapest price, they don't need to think about it, and they don't need to talk to my competitors? And so I started incorporating conversations and questions that would lead them to say those things. And my closing rate went to the roof because they started taking actions consistent with their words. Think about this, Brad. Think about people who are out there selling right now, especially to mom and pop homeowner, any customer really. What's the last conversation the consumers have between themselves before they talk to the furniture salesman or the air conditioning salesman? What's their last conversation they have between themselves outside of the salesman's presence? We're not buying crap today. So if you look at Cialdini's research and public declarations dictate future actions, if the last conversation the homeowner has is that we're not buying tonight, what actions are they going to take at the end? They're going to not buy tonight. Yeah. Unless they so, run into a closer. Yeah, exactly. But that closer is going to be smart enough to change the conversation and get them to acknowledge that they will buy tonight. They don't need three bids and they don't need the cheapest price. And that's, and, what, that's what I did.